Well, everyone, Thermalright has officially done it again. They've released yet another cooler in what seems like an endless attempt to spam the whole air cooling market with endless iterations of the Peerless Assassin. So this, this is the Phantom Spirit Evo. And I mean, look at the madness we're dealing with right now. First of all, there's the OG Peerless Assassin, and of course, a less expensive SE version. And you might not have made this link, but there's also the Frost Tower 120, which is essentially a Peerless Assassin with upgraded fans. Then we have the Assassin Mini, the artist formerly known as the Silver Soul, but with some cosmetic work done here, and a worse fan. Then there's the Phantom Spirit, basically an Assassin with an extra heat pipe tacked on. And of course, there's an SE version for that too. Now there's the Phantom Spirit 120 Evo. So what exactly is this thing? Well, it, it's, a, it's a little bit complicated, but pretty straightforward at the same time. First of all, the good news is that with this being released at 45 to 55 dollars, it means the original Phantom Spirit has now moved down a couple of dollars too. So it's going for between like 27 to 36 dollars the last couple of times I checked on it. But overall, the Evo is a literal clone of the Phantom Spirit with the same dimensions, same seven heat pipe layout, identical mounting kit, and exactly the same fin arrays. There are two major differences though. The Evo has an all black design and uses two TL K12 fans, which are currently Thermal Wright's highest end RGB equipped fan series. And compared to the original TLC-12 fans on the Phantom Spirit and PS120 SE, they're certainly an upgrade, at least on paper, because you have to remember, most if not every single one of the high-end heatsinks currently on the market, doesn't matter if it's from Noctua or Corsair or anybody else, typically has their heatsinks and fans designed together. On the other hand, there's a lot of situations where a heatsink is designed around the capabilities of the fans themselves. Now with the Evo, you really have to wonder if that synergy between those components is going to be lost in some way. But you know what isn't lost? That's this case from Thermal Take. The new Tower 300, definitely a unique looking case with a three-piece panoramic front view, made specifically for micro ATX motherboards with insane hardware support, like a 420mm rad fits on the side of the enclosure with this easily removable fan bracket. My 4-slot GPU fits in no problem with breathing room all around, fully dust protected on all sides too, the optional LCD screen is super fun, and the lay flat mode <laughs> brings the Tower 300 into a whole new universe. Definitely explore the color options too, all linked below. Anyways, what we have to do is focus a lot more on these fans because when you look at the Evo, you're probably going to assume that this cooler is more expensive because it gets better cooling due to the addition of these fans. First thing we got to do here is actually take a listen to them. So what this actually shows is that at identical RPM levels, the Evo is actually quieter than the Phantom Spirit. For example, at 1000 RPM, the Evo is still below our noise floor. Meanwhile, the Phantom Spirit is just over 37 decibels. Meanwhile, at 1500 RPM, the Evo is actually three decibels quieter, and that is a huge deal. So on paper, at least, the K12s are obviously superior fans from an RPM normalized perspective, but can also spin a whole lot faster. And after 1500 RPM, they also get a heck of a lot louder too. Actually, from 1400 until leveling off at 1800, they get exponentially louder at every step until finally hitting just above 45 decibels around 2000 RPM. Now, one of the main reasons for that huge uptick in noise above 1400 RPM is simply due to turbulence. That is the airflow from one fan smashing face first into the next fan because it is so poorly managed by the fin array. Now, turbulence is 
normal when you put two fans so close together on a dual tower heatsink. We hear it all the time, but on this one, it is on the extreme side. And that is sort of like pointing towards the fin arrays being a little bit of an issue here. Because the alignment of heatsink and fan engineering is why you see such different fin stack designs from one cooler to another. And no, this isn't due to aesthetics. Check it out. Here's the Peerless Assassin. Look at its fins, especially the face that points towards the fan. Here's the Frost Commander. It's completely different. And the Frost Spirit. And the original Phantom Spirit. And finally, the Evo. So what we have here is a substantial fan upgrade without any parallel optimizations to the fin array. And make no mistake about it, those profiles help with channeling airflow, reducing back pressure, decreasing increasing the likelihood of turbulence and ultimately play a huge role in overall performance. And look, I can talk until I'm blue in the face about all of the technical possibilities of mixing the fans and the heatsink, but in order to actually put this into practice, let's put this thing on the Intel gaming system and start our testing. The other thing I want to mention is that just to eliminate any zingers, we actually purchased two Phantom Evos. So you're going to see the averages of both those results. And the first set of numbers doesn't paint the Evo in a particularly good light, at least not in comparison to the original PS120 SE. And remember, that one is actually operating with five less fins. It narrowly loses at every single decibel level, and then only pulls ahead in the upper acoustical range due to its higher speed fans. But you have to put this into a bit of context, because its numbers still make the Spirit Evo one of the best coolers we've ever tested. It's just not as good as its predecessor during gaming in decibel normalized scenarios. Moving on to full load scenarios and at a low 180 watts of thermal output, the Evo actually does really well, either matching or beating the PS120 SE by a degree or two across the entire noise range. However, once again, it only really pulls ahead after getting louder than the SE. And that leads to the Evo becoming one of the five best heatsinks we've ever tested at this wattage and the only one with 120 millimeter fans. That is a massive accomplishment. That says so much about how well it's designed for lower heat loads. Moving on to 253 watts, and things change around a bit, with the Evo becoming a literal clone of the original Phantom Spirit SE. I mean, sure, it does get better numbers at 44 and 45 decibels, but louder doesn't mean better. I mean, I guess if you're testing at 100% fan speed or with an overly aggressive PWM enabled, this might look like a superior cooler, but it actually isn't. Because when it comes to a noise weighted perspective like ours, you're simply paying more for a bit of RGB and fans that simply don't increase performance, at least when they're installed on a heatsink not specifically designed around their capabilities. And since none of the air coolers we've ever come across can get below 100 degrees without any limits in place, let's move right along to clock speeds on the CPU that's allowed to do whatever it wants. And it's becoming pretty evident that as heat loads increase, the Evo struggles to match the PS120 SE. With all of the things being equal, that points towards the fans being the main culprit here. They simply can't move enough air through the fin array efficiently enough to cope with higher heat loads. And yet the Evo numbers, they're still good. Actually, they're among the best we've ever seen, but on a modern Intel system, the SE is a better buy from every standpoint. Maybe thermal rate, they're just trying a little bit too hard. They're trying to have too many coolers at too many price points and just muddy the waters as much as possible. Well, maybe the AMD results will have something different. And sadly, in gaming, the Evo actually does a bit worse than it did on the Intel system, at least at lower noise levels. Those numbers, along with the higher ambient case temperatures during gaming, directly points towards an inability of the fans to evacuate hot air from the cooler, at which point CPU temperatures naturally start to rise. It's not like this is within the margin of error either, since these fans on this cooler obviously produce an inferior product in decibel normalized gaming scenarios. That's absolutely something you need to take into account before assuming the higher priced option is a better choice. And yet install this thing on a lower wattage chip like the 7600X and suddenly it looks a hell of a lot better. Obviously the Evo is a good cooler, but it needs to get loud to be great. Get under that point and it's still one of the best at any decibel point. Sadly though, it doesn't distinguish itself from the 120SE. And on a 7700X, it's pretty much the same story. What we're seeing here are two identical coolers. Yes, two of the best we've tested, though equipped with different fans. That's a problem though. 
Because if the original Phantom Spirit or the SE version didn't exist, Thermal Rate would have a winner. And it still is in many ways, since we're looking at performance that beats much more expensive coolers at a fraction of their cost. Yet we've already seen this, and from a heatsink that costs even less than the Evo. Moving on to the 7950X shows the same trend it did on Intel. As the CPU's thermal load rises, the Evo falls further behind the regular Phantom Spirit SE, at least until its high RPM fans can compensate. At 43 decibels and above, it gets some good temperatures if you're okay with blowing your eardrums out. Though, if you're running a 7950X and absolutely need an air cooler, just go with the Frost Spirit V3. But I'm also splitting hairs here because there's virtually nothing separating the top coolers on this chip. They're all good, but still none of them can get the 7950X under 90 degrees. You'll need a really good liquid cooler for that. Forget about air cooling. All right, with all that out of the way, it's time to gut check some of our numbers because some of them might look like we have a one in a million PS120 SC sample or a potentially dodgy Evo sample. The first thing I did is I installed the K12 fans from the Evo on our original Phantom Spirit SE samples. And yep, pretty much the exact same numbers as our two Evos. Within margin of error, of course. So that rules out God tier 1 in a thousand PS120 SE samples. But just to check these numbers too, what we did is we installed three of our best ever fans on the Evo. One of them is the Lian Li P28. The other one is the be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4. And finally, the budget option everybody loves is the P12 Max. And for all of you folks who are screaming right now in the dog pile or comment thread down below, why didn't you test the T30 on the Evo? Well, it simply doesn't fit. I'm gonna demonstrate this right here, right now on camera. You actually have to pry open the fin arrays and you can forget about putting fan clips on here. So while yes, it does fit, shoot, I can't even take it out now. While it does fit on the Peerless Assassin, I misspoke about that. I think it was like last year when I said the T30 wouldn't fit on the Peerless Assassin. Sadly, our sample of the Peerless Assassin had slightly warped heat pipes. So the two fin arrays cantered in. Well, this one, this T30 will not fit on the Evo unless you jam it in there. And to me, that's incompatible. So let's digest these numbers for a bit because they prove that performance of even top tier fans is completely tied to what they're installed on. Because by themselves, the Pro 4, P28, and P12 Max absolutely dominate the C12 fans normally installed on the Phantom Spirit in every category, let alone those installed on the Evo. Airflow, static pressure, you name it, they're better. And yet despite that, only the Be Quiets are able to get noticeably better than stock results. Meanwhile, the other two actually perform worse than the technically lower end stock fans. And that should actually start an interesting debate since it destroys the assumption that installing supposedly better fans on an air cooler will net you noticeable performance gains. Sometimes it will, while other times, like we see here, it absolutely won't. And this is something we see all the time with Noctua. We take one of their coolers, like we do in some of our fan testing, we put on certain fans and guess what? They perform worse than the stock Noctua fans quite a few times. Now, the entire point of creating a great cooler is that synergy between your fan and your heatsink design. If one of those things is ever so slightly off, performance will naturally suffer. And that's exactly what we see with the Phantom Spirit Evo. In a world without the cheaper Phantom Spirit, it's a chart-topping cooler. But ultimately, unless you want an all-black version of the original Spirit with a bit of RGB thrown in, it's a pointless addition to Thermal Wright's lineup. So if you were assuming the Evo's higher price and better fans would lead to noticeably improved performance, I'm sorry for the reality check, guys. But I guess with Thermal Wright literally spamming the air cooler market right now with new products, it was only a matter of time until a new product was proven to be maybe the same performance as the one that came before it. I'm just really excited to see what Thermal Wright comes up with maybe next week, because knowing them, there's something else on the horizon that looks exactly the same as a Peerless Assassin or Phantom Spirit right in the pipeline. But anyways, until that point, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.